Hey, how you doing? It's Trick or Trauma here, and today we're talking about estradiol. Estradiol for me was actually the very first lab value that I had that was not within normal limits after initiating testosterone replacement therapy, all right, TRT. So um, I've been on TRT for about six months. I went back to a doctor to go over labs and see where we were at, and my estradiol level was a 44. So. 39 and below is considered to be within normal limits. Mine was a 44. So at that time, I was actually concerned about that. My physician, not so much. He said it was borderline high, not a real big concern, nothing to really go overboard about. We would keep an eye on it and see what it did in the future, all right? And in that visit, what he explained to me was, is that if your testosterone's under normal limit and your estradiol's high, extraordinarily high, then there were pharmaceuticals you could take, uh, the aromatase inhibitors, that would actually stop the estradiol from being high. Um, he also explained that if you were on testosterone replacement therapy and your testosterone and free testosterone were high and estradiol was high, they would back down your testosterone levels to try to also back down your estradiol, but that wasn't my case. Again, my testosterone level was right where we wanted it to be. Estradiol was just slightly high. Not a big concern for him, but it was a concern for me, right? I like to, I like my labs to all be normal. So I started looking into exactly um, what estradiol was, and he, he helped me a little bit with that in that visit. He explained to me that you have receptors in the body that accept testosterone, that it, when you add supplemental testosterone into the bodies, if all the receptors that accept testosterone are filled with testosterone, and then you have this free-floating testosterone in the body, the body can choose, doesn't always, but can choose to convert some of that testosterone into estradiol, the male version of estrogen. Um, the issues that can arise with extraordinarily high estradiol levels would be things like acne, uh, the potential to gynomasia, man boob, that kind of thing. So, uh, again, but he was not worried. 44 did not seem to concern him a great deal. Did concern me. Again, I like all my labs to be within normal limits. So, I happened to, uh, to watch a lot of Dave Palumbo's RX Muscle podcast. I really, you know, I enjoy watching him. Uh, and uh, I was going through one, and it just so happened to be right this time, one of them God things, um, where... You know, he talked about estradiol and buffering estradiol. Now, again, you can take a drug to lower estradiol called an aromatase inhibitor, which precludes the body from converting testosterone into estrogen. Um, and, or you can buffer, and buffer just basically is not as severe of a chemical. Um, you, you're not going to get as drastic of results. But Dave Palumbo, in one of his episodes, talked about a substance called DIM. And DIM stands for uh, dindolomethane, I think it is. Dindolomethane, I believe it is. Um, and so I started looking it up on the internet, trying to figure out what it was. Uh, there were a lot of different information on the internet, and a lot of it didn't, you know, a lot of it didn't all agree with each other. I saw things on the internet where it said 60 milligrams a day was the ideal dose. I saw things where it said 120 milligrams a day was an ideal dose. Um, you know, I partook in some bro science, I guess you'd say, off of a forum, off of one of the uh, muscle magazines, and uh, had a guy in there who was a very similar circumstance to me, and, and according to him, he had dealt with this for quite some time and really didn't want to go down the aerobatase inhibitor route, and so well, he had experimented with DIM for a while and come to find out that for him, he felt like six milligrams per kilogram was a great dose, okay? So, in paramedicine, we have what we call 2 a.m. rule, which is how to convert your body pounds into kilograms. And it's basically take your pounds, divide it in half, subtract 10% of that, and you'll come up with kilograms. So, I, on my average walking around weight, um, when I'm feeling good, I'm, my average walking around weight today is about 220 pounds. So, if you take 220, divide it in half, you come up with 110. Take 10% uh, of 110, you get 11. goes down to 99, 100 kilograms, okay? So... Six milligrams per kilogram would take us 600 milligrams. So the DIM that I take, which is actually this product right here, um, not paid by them in any way, shape, or form, 200 milligram caplets. So to get 600 milligrams, you take three caplets a day. Now, it does say women's health. Comes out of the women's health section of a, of a big box store that I buy that at. And, and, you know, I feel like I've had good results with it. So low estradiol can be an issue because it can make you bone brittle. All right, so just that being said, um, 
I would never take that product if my estradiol levels were within normal limits um, and I wasn't on sub supplemental testosterone. But again, we go back to October, or excuse me, go back to June. And in June, I had this estradiol level of 44. Okay, slightly high. Doc's not freaked out about it. I'm a little bit concerned. So he wanted to see me again in October. Um, and, and, you know, this is, again, I started my TRT replacement program after a surgical procedure. And so the October visit was both a uh, checkup on the surgical procedure. And we were going to just check my labs too again then. Um, so we got a 44 in June. In October, I come back. I've been on DIM now since about a week after my visit in June um, where, where I decided to start taking it to see what the results are. So I go from a 44 to a 33. Again, 39 and below is considered normal limit, so I go from 44 to 33. So, continuing taking DIM, I've looked all over the internet to see if there's any long-term bad effects from DIM. I can't find anything that says a prolonged use of DIM is, is hazardous to the body or detrimental to your health in any way. So, I have for years now taken DIM every day, all right? So, I go from a 44 to a 33. Last April, my my lab value on estradiol is a 22. Okay, last September, my lab value on estradiol is a 26. So, you know, I feel like uh, that estradiol has helped me buffer down my, or excuse me, DIM has helped me buffer down my estradiol levels. Might all be bro science. I, I completely admit that, but. You know, I had a 44. My level of testosterone has not changed. So my level of testosterone is pretty much spot on where it was when I was at a 44. But yet, through taking DIM, I believe that I have lowered that down to an acceptable level. All right? And there is some, uh, some other things on the internet that said that this would be useful. My understanding of DIM is, is that there are certain foods in your diet that you can take, like that are cruciferous foods, kale, collards, cabbage, those type of things, and there is a chemical located inside those foods that help buffer estradiol, and DIM is just a concentrated form of that chemical that's in the food that would help buffer down estradiol. That's it. It's not a, it's not a pharmaceutical. It's not regulated by the FDA, um, but I do feel like for myself, I, I've seen the results of it, and, and I can say, yep, I believe it works for me. Would it work for you? That I couldn't tell you. But that's what I do for my estradiol levels. So that brings me to another question. If one day I was to decide to stop taking DIM, or one day DIM, I'm taking it, and my estradiol level climbs through the roof anyways, you know, what could I do to help bring that back down? So if you guys are on TRT and you're experiencing high estradiol levels, what do your what does your physician have you take in order to bring down your estradiol levels i'd love to know what your you know what your regime is for that what your dosing looks like for that um how do you feel about it if you do take an aromatase inhibitor do you notice any side effects from it like i, I really didn't go down the route of exploring aromatase inhibitors really severely because i felt like i had a good thing going with dim but if you're on an aromatase inhibitor do you feel like it does anything that you don't particularly care for um and you know I would love for you to put it in the comments because I love to read them. I try to check my comments at least one time a day and get back to people with different things. So put it in the comments. Love to read it. Um, yeah, and that's what I got. That's what I use for estradiol. I use DIM. Uh, I'm really satisfied with it. Don't feel like I have any bad reactions from it. And that's where I'm at. All right. So trick or trauma, you guys have a good day.